the three essential pillars to improving at painting Warhammer faster. It's almost like hitting the reset button on your painting experience a little bit because you're entering new territory with the way the paints behave, finish, all those kind of things. <laughs> I don't know who does I it. don't even know. I don't, I don't know even know it. that one. That one. Yeah, that come out of nowhere. The improvement that you're going to have got is massive compared to the amount of time it's taken. You can either quickly implement what they're talking about and just give it a quick go on like a scrap bit of plastic or even on the model you're working on. Or, like I said, it's information that you're downloading into your brain, like you said. Don't lie. Oh, give over. <laughs> come on. <laughs> give over. You painted a Blood Angel Captain then, I hear? I certainly did, yeah teased it on this podcast as well, didn't you? You could probably say that any given day of the week and it'll probably actually end up being true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, you painted a blood angel. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, you're like that with going to like concerts and gigs. I'll, yeah, like, like, oh, I'll walk go, in the go, office go in the Go to a gig this week, Joe. Yeah, five. Yeah. yeah. It's a solid, it's a solid like if you don't yeah. know what to say to me on Monday morning, just be like, did you enjoy the show? I was like, yeah, yeah. It becomes, guess, yeah. It becomes a bit of a standard. It's just like, just ask it because you know the answer is yes, I did. So. Yeah. So it's like you see yeah. James after you haven't seen him for a few days. Like, painted painted blood a blood angel yeah. recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I um I had uh, a load of fun painting the uh, Warhammer Heroes Primaris Captain um, in honour of uh, a very similar kind of pose to this artwork, which, uh, which yeah, I, I took it as quite a bit of inspiration. Um, yeah, uh, I had quite a limited time frame, so I didn't do everything that I wanted to do on it. There were a few things I missed off, like the flames on the legs and some bits and bobs. But um, just, just the most important part of that iconic artwork. <laughs> The hey, minor detail. Hey, the yellow fist and the half red thumb was done, okay? so You're telling me that the half red thumb is more important than the flank? It's all about the little details, George. Well, it's not about the big details, is it? In, in <laughs> fairness. That's, that's obvious. In fairness, like, this is, I think we spoke about, when we did, like, the story of Siege, Yeah, we spoke about, like, James's passion for still wanting to paint for the company and, like... Um, us arguing about like whether that's like whether that can fit in and stuff this model was the pinnacle of that like as yeah. soon as james saw the warhammer hero space marine captain he was like a kid that discovered warhammer for the first time and just thought it was the coolest thing ever he because I, I, knew, I knew it just fit the pose it was like a reflection look of the pose obviously the armament is a little bit different he's got a bolt gun he's got a plasma but there's a bit of difference in armament <laughs> but, just a few differences but, 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 he, but he was like so excited to paint this model and eventually um, eventually it came to it and I was like I think it, just it does the... just no one else is doing it so you might as well do it and I've never seen someone so excited he was like a vulture swarming my office because I had been, been here to film the unboxing video. Yeah. It's like, have you filmed the unboxing video yet? Yeah. Have you filmed it yet? Can I take it home? Can yeah. I start painting it? I told you. I had I had the plan for what I was going to do with it straight away. So I was like, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was fun. Really good model to paint. Enjoyable. Um, I haven't painted any of the Heroes models previously. So it was the first one I ever painted from those, like those line of miniatures. I know they come in mean, like blue plastic. It's a little bit different. They are... They're Primaris this time, though. They're Primaris this time, yeah. But they're... Yeah, what is it? This is the fourth series? Yeah, you had the... First was Marines. just... First, first, was, was, first was normal Firstborn. Then but Nurgle. But there was like slightly scaled... Different. Scaled up yeah, a little bit. Then Nurgle. No, no, no. Nurgle was Series 3. I think Series 2 was the Blood Angels the Terminators. Terminators, yeah. And then then Nurgle, then these. So yeah, yeah. They're good. They're really fun, actually. There's some really good poses in there. Um, Like, like the grenade one, the guy reloading, the sergeant model. Uh, Looks great. Were the, um, were the Terminators scaled up a little bit? I think so. I yeah, know. I think I think I they never were. saw them. I never or saw they, them, but they had I didn't tactical, know tactical rock base extensions, which made them a bit bigger. I think so. I yeah. remember with the first one ones, I painted a couple of them, and they definitely had like longer legs. They are a bit bigger. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are a bit bigger. Definitely. Um, yeah, but no, it was great. Really had fun. We've each nabbed one as well that we have you're going to paint one, aren't you? Are you painting one? You're having me on the podcast. Are you painting? <laughs> oh, no, I've got to do it now, haven't I? I thought you were. Yeah, no, I'm painting one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I haven't started painting it yet. But I've I've given you two other things since you did that. I was like, can you paint this as well? Can you paint this as well? So fair enough if you don't get it done, but I've nabbed one as yeah, well. Yeah, no, I'm painting one. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward um, to them. They're quite cool. They're Maybe. good. They're good models. It's yeah. cool yeah. as well, because this time around, if you have the whole set, you get a kill team. Yeah, it's yeah actually, you don't even need the whole set. Do you not? It, I think it's any variation of six of them. I think, there's seven, I think there's seven total. But a pack... A pack if you bought a whole retail pack, it's eight, I think. I'll take six captains, seven captains all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and from what I'm hearing, um, I'm, obviously I don't really move in the kill team circles anymore. I haven't played kill team in a long time. But from what, I'm, the kill from what I'm hearing from the uh, 
from from the, those parts. Uh, quite a decent kill team that you get out of it as well, which is cool. It's not like one of these kind of gimmicky ones that like no one's actually going to use. Mm. It seems like a good. lot of people are working out if you know for also for the record, the Warhammer Heroes not released in the UK yet either. Yeah. So, yeah. but because the rules are online now for each of the um, you can models. just make them out, the you weapon can get yourself, yeah, you can you definitely can just, get yourself a box of yeah, assault intercessors people are people are kind of building their own um, which I think is cool, cool as well that's, it's really yeah. it's really good yeah it must look like assault intercessors right and then it's yeah it's got eliminator in there I don't know uh, the, the, so the, the benefit to this kill team compared to others is that I think this is the only marine kill team that you can field that has a mixture of units right um so I think there's one, one's an eliminator, one's heavy intercessor. But there's nothing like assault, crazy one's... unique to the box that you couldn't try. You can, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a few. Obviously, the models are unique and, and yeah, the poses, poses and stuff. Yeah. But the actual loadouts and stuff, you could probably find in existing models and put them together. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was what do you know. That was one of the first like Warhammery things I done because when I first got into the hobby, Series One came out, and I think I already had like a box of. Do you remember they done those um, easy to build like? Marines, Reavers, and like intercessors. Yeah. It was literally like a box of like three. Or yeah, 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 I, I think I'd done one of those, and I think I went back to the Warhammer shop to like get some more stuff, and they just come out with those Warhammer heroes. I was like, this, mm. this is brilliant. It's just like one model. Because to me, spent. I mean, still in part, but like to me at the time, spending like all my money on like a box of like ten models was like crazy. I wanted like variety. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, oh, I could get like just one. Yeah, so. yeah, They're, it's a cool idea. They are, good. Um, they are really good. Yeah, yeah. What else? What else? No. Crate, um, crate 3D. Oh, the the uh, Evernight Battlegrounds thing that that Kickstarter launched this week. That's cool. We painted some models for that. Video went up earlier in the week. It's great. Um, models are amazing. It's. I remember getting them in, and because we were always a bit, not necessarily skeptical, but we're like you you you're always unsure when you get in resin models from a range that you've never seen before because well, it could go one of two ways when right? you're when you're as privileged to seeing gw plastics day in day out mm. it, it does put you in a bubble of really high crisp quality casts so then to see some resin models straight out of the box that are that good is like is amazing yeah we'll put like the the kickstarter's live now there's 10 models initially released yeah. 75 mil scale so a little bit bigger than definitely what i'm used to i imagine what a lot of our listeners are used to a little bit bigger it's like um, the size of like a primark but uh bit, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah 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 kind bit, of bit, kind bit, of the bigger, primark a little bit bigger yeah yeah maybe yeah. just like the the yeah maybe a little bit a little bit bigger in terms of like overall size like, mm. you know, yeah, yeah. No, not um well. the models are fantastic but like, yeah i mean phil we painted them like um they not, proofed it Number absolutely, one, absolutely baby number baby. one done an incredible job, but number two it had nothing but positive things to say mm -hmm. about the quality of the models and everything. Um, yeah, seems like a cool, cool little thing to watch out for. Do you want to just preface for the listeners sort of what it is? Um, so initially, the they designed this game and it's got all it, all of its lore and everything. Um, uh, but what they're doing is they're releasing these ten models, just as like collectors, um, as like things. collectors set effectively first mm -hmm. before the game comes out and each of them are um the kind of army leaders mm -hmm. for what is then going to go on to be the game um but there's all sorts of different it's like a, it's one of those things where like they've covered all the bases for whatever your vibe is yeah. whatever you like to paint one of the characters it's, it's, there. There. it's probably got to take take your fancy i think our both of ours favorite is the same yes yeah, which is the, the, the lich guy the uh, well the is the first one you spoke about on the video? Yeah, hide black, hide black with chairs. Oh, I like, I like the. the spider is that the one. crouched like skull? Yeah, with, skeleton with the spear. Guy. Yeah, no, the yeah. the like spider queen lady. You like the spider queen? Spider yeah. queen. I, I She's have great. A feeling, I have a feeling that the spider queen one is gonna be the most in, popular. In part one. fairness, that is probably in part to Phil's amazing paint job. The color scheme for that, yeah, does it for me. It's a good color scheme. Yeah, color scheme is mega yeah. on that. But so, um, yeah. yeah, it's really cool. Like as I say, we're always not. It's just you never know what you're going to get with a new range of, of models, and it's cool to see, especially when you see one that's actually like really high quality, really yeah. cool. But the re the resin was fantastic. Like we've seen loads of resin over the years from all different places, from 3D printed, like everything, like every type of like resin, whether it be 3D printed or cast or whatever. And like out the box, out the pack, when we got them, these were like jaw droppingly good. Yeah, 75 mil scale is so nice to work with as well. 
I've never really done like even within Warhammer, I've never really done many like big not, models. Primarchs, like are, huge Primarchs are I've close, never painted a Primarch. They're, they're, not, not, they're not 75. They're not 70. No, they're, they're close. They're, they're very close to an extent. But, Probably like but they're, 60. They're, they're, the, yeah. they're the closest you're going to get to like a 75 mil, I think. Yeah. You know, so, so yeah, they're, 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 have you never painted like a, never painted like a, have you painted 75, like a bust or a no. or anything? I've, I've never no, done not. a, never done a bust. I've it's never done, my, um, it's not my bag, unfortunately. I, never uh, done, yeah, uh, Never done even like a Primark in 40k. I've got my I've I've got my uh, my uh, uh, Forge World Lion from the release at home still in its box. I didn't touch He's it. He's sleeping. He's sleeping. Yeah, he's sleeping. He yeah. hasn't woke up yet. Yeah. Um, I've done one bust and one 75 mil scale. And they're both really fun. You enjoyed it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I should definitely do more. I probably I might pick up some of those. I was gonna say I could definitely be tempted to get that the the one that we like. I black it's, it's amazing. A cool. The cool pose model. is amazing. Oh, I literally love it. My, my problem now is I've seen the one Phil painted and yeah, yeah. Still gonna look as good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but would highly recommend. I'll put the links and everything below. Yeah, but we had a real, real good opportunity to just paint some models, uh, you know, for the Kickstarter. And, and as I said, Phil from the team, he, he he smashed it like Hulk with loads of refreshers on his mouth. So he's literally like absolutely amazing. Like he. <laughs> I don't know. How he does I it. don't even know. I don't, I don't know even know it. that one. That yeah. one. Yeah, that come out of nowhere. Sugar overload. Like, yeah, he yeah. uh, he absolutely loves it. He was he was great. And see, that Phil smashed it. So, so yeah. Was really? it? Sorry. Was it refreshers? Yeah, refreshers. Like the sweets. sweets. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. He's having a sugar, sugar, sugar rush, sugar rush. Yeah. Is the Hulk known for his like? He loves, I imagine it, if you he gave, loves he loves a sweet mate. What are you on about? Like, <laughs> I imagine if you classic gave, Hulk classic Hulk trope that I've seen sweets. him on the corner shop going in there. Yeah. You know, if you gave Hulk them like goodie bags that you used to get as a kid as you live and that had all the refreshers and stuff in it yeah I reckon the Hulk would go mad yeah fair play yeah, would, fair you, would you also when you got those goodie bags just eat the refreshers and throw away those like chalk like long anything yeah, they chalk, were horrendous yeah, anything, like, anything chalk or like the things that used to be like oh it's a it's a bracelet and you can eat that I don't want that yeah no, that I'll just, just ping that, that, that just became a catapult <laughs> I used to yeah, just yeah. I used to just bite yeah, half, half of it, of it and if it had a, half yeah if it had a string on it you just eat half and then you just ping it yeah. out of people um, but yeah refreshers yeah. I don't know how we got onto that but yeah, yeah. Refreshers, refreshers is an S tier sweet yeah it's good it's top tier it depends on your age bracket I yeah. think if you're under 12 it's an S tier sweet I think as you get older I don't know if I could handle it. No, I couldn't. <laughs> Half my jaw would come off. With that. <laughs> I think apparently, my teeth I'm, would fall out. apparently, I'm twelve. <laughs> When's the last yeah. time you had one? Be honest. When's yeah. the last time you had a refresher? Probably mm, within the last six months, for sure. Don't lie. I'm give dead over. serious. <laughs> come on, <laughs> give over. Yeah, no, that's serious. <laughs> George, over George has been going too many parties with little goodie bags. Yeah, you don't get like leftover from Christmas. You get like given like loads of like, sweets. And that's the, more and like the um, that's like celebrations. Yeah, that, isn't it? That's I don't know what like, I don't know what Christmas party. Yeah, what yeah. Christmas party mix are you, you getting? Get, you get the like the big tub. Like you know, you get like a big tub of like all. Uh, oh, all I get what you mean. Stuff. You get the same one for like all the retro sweets, and there's always refreshers in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fair I play. Have, fair play. But no, I haven't. I haven't. I'll have to. I'll hunt one out. I'll give it a go. Well, if you're in the comments, we're stick up for me because this is going. absolutely ridiculous. Right. Do you want to go? Speaking of, do you want to go through some viewers' comments? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. First one. Now, when I read the name for this, you might agree with me here, Joe. Does this look like a plant from a certain particular person in the room? If I was having a quick glance, I might think that was James. I just, like, I just like to carry out this. I do not have any fake accounts and dive into our own comments, leaving comments hopefully that get chosen to re get read well, out. Well, what does the comments say? Well, J James Otero might might not, but James Otron Otron Art. Okay, right. It's definitely not me. I feel like I feel like I have to defend it, but it's yeah. definitely not me. It says uh, this is this is in reference to the episode where we talked about the Tyranids. Yeah, I feel like lizard vibes. Are coming from hormigants and termigants having velociraptor style poses. Well, that's, that that seals it though, because there's no way that I think they're they're lizards. So, so I would not write that comment. Well, <laughs> it's true, yeah. so, like, <laughs> I think, in, in fairness, did it come up? I think maybe James said or something um, during the episode. Like, yeah, fair enough. Like some of those models, it, it does give the vibe, but overall, still bugs. I'll, they're, bugs. I'll, uh, they're bugs until the end of time. I do appreciate that people are trying to stick up for you as we were like don't, oh, no, no, don't, episode, don't, don't, don't stick up for him no, 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 it was okay. a real dice roll when I was watching the comments come out for the episode because I was like this is going to go one of two ways <laughs> the first two comments we got were like 
obviously they're bugs. Yeah. And I was like, yes. I was like, that's it, it's over. But then they came through. They came through. Yeah, me. you got some support. Mm-hmm. Some people came some support. Out the I think it's fair on some of the models, but overall. They're bugs. They're bugs. Well, Faces and Bases says. Regular, regular viewer. Regular yeah, yeah. commenter. Yeah. Uh, this is in reference to the uh, the, <laughs> the film round that we did a couple oh, of weeks yeah, ago yeah. with Fancast Movies. The golden rule is that any film or plot can be redone with the Muppets and one human lead. So maybe Perfect. the Horus Heresy with Jason Momoa as the Emperor. Amazing. That'd be incredible. And of I... course, Animal as Anne Grant. <laughs> oh my God, that is incredible. <laughs> so I've seen this before. I don't know why we didn't, I didn't think of this when we were doing it, but I've seen this before where people... Um, there was a trend a little while ago about like on Twitter or something, um, pick the next, like recast your favorite film, but the how Muppets. it would be for Muppets. And the best one that I saw someone come up with was that there should be a Knives Out sequel that is literally just, I don't know if you see Knives Out, but it, with just Daniel Craig as the human. Yeah. And then oh. the rest of it is Muppets. <laughs> like Murder Mystery Muppets with Daniel Craig as the, his character. I would, watch that. I would watch that. I would watch oh, that. That's brilliant. So that's yeah. such a good one. But yeah, that's a great one as well. Daniel Craig yeah. would be a great like lead human role in that as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, he like, is. He's, in, he's, in, he's the, pretty much the lead role in both of them, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, he, I think George means like playing off of Muppets. Oh, right. Okay. Well. Fair yeah. Time, um, yeah. But like the, uh, the d- using that within Warhammer and doing that and getting the animal was Jason, Jason, Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. <laughs> yeah, bro, it's brilliant. Animal was angry on is like is like perfect. Yeah, like, I'm trying absolutely. to imagine like some of the like tertiary lesser Muppet characters in like Space Marine armor, just their little head poking out. Yeah, yeah. like Rizzo the Rat, just like yeah, 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 just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's a maybe we could do a full Muppets casting of of Warhammer down the line. That's a good one. Another game show there for you, George. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we should we should definitely do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh Neon Necromunda says, I use a syringe to transfer paint from pots to droppers, save so much hassle and paint loss, like the ones used for kids' medicine or baking. Cool. Neon Necromunda, you have missed the entire point <laughs> of what I was saying. Stop introducing <laughs> third party tools. For your third party tours. This is a chain reaction of like, all right, well, I want this paint isn't doing it for me. So I want to put it in a different type of paint. And then I've got to use a different type of tool to get it out of the different type of thing to put it in the different type of thing. St- pour, snippers, lid, off, pour, <laughs> let it go. Let the one milliliter of paint go. I've to be fair, I have used the syringes thing. I think the the problem now you've got would, clean... you have to thin, would you have to thin the paint down? Presumably. I'd be interested to know if you have to thin the paint down. Let's say you don't. You've still got to clean the syringe out. Yeah, you've still got a load of paint. Not, if, it's, not if he's saying like little if you thin, cheapy... If you thin it down... Oh, you'd paint. have to use a disposable one. So now you've got to have a but dedicated... Yeah, but hang on. Dis- clear, clean it out. We just put water in it. But now that's an extra Flush step. Flush it out a few yeah, times. Yeah, but you've got to do that every single time you're doing the paint. What yeah. if you've got like a collection of like 30 paints and you want to put them all over? It's going to take ages. True, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do just pour them. So in right. hindsight, just use the pots that they come, the paints come with. Don't bother using Just pour pots. them straight up. Yeah. Yeah. I oh. mean... Well, no, he's saying, he's saying don't do it at don't, all. Don't, don't, oh, he's, he's saying don't do it Let's get rid all. of all third party, third party nonsense. Let's just stick with the pots that the paint so comes James, with. So James somehow has got to wire this back around to it. So basically, just buy paints from 1991 this is this is the argument here all the time that it's so difficult to put them in the dropper bottles there's just no point in doing it so all of these little barriers for yourself so that you can you can basically give yourself an excuse for procrastinating and being lazy which is what i was getting at the other other week yeah yeah i mean look whatever works for people if they like if they want to do that then do that don't get me wrong that would solve the problem of paint wastage doing the doing the syringe syringe thing but i'm my, my argument is that that defeats the whole point of doing it in the first place, which is just being efficient and just odds are you're not going to get that tiny bit of paint out. True. True. I might give it a go. And then the syringes? Yeah, yeah. I might give it a go. I'll pass. Just to see how much of a... I don't know. See how much more did you get, any, get out of it. Did you manage to get any of those Vallejo uh, dropper bottles? No, I haven't looked yet. Well, I, I, you sent me a link to one, mm. but um, yeah, I haven't got them yet. I haven't, really, I haven't got any paints to transfer. I'm not going to transfer from my rubbish dropper bottles to good dropper bottles. No, that would be madness. Do you know yeah. what? That would be so quite, I've got to wait till I buy that a new paint. That would be quite easy though because they've already got the little tip on them. You <laughs> yeah. can just squeeze it straight out. It's just like using a syringe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. 
that yeah great? i would have, that would have been my process is pour it into a rubbish dropper bottle and then pour that into a good one it's just like even a, more a series of funnels you just want to get smaller and smaller yeah start exactly like a so, tiny mill. so until i've got some new paint to pour i don't really need them yeah, yeah but I, I what i'm hearing won't. is you should buy some more paint no I can't, I can't be, I can't be buying more paint. I don't need more. I mean, paint. I'm never going to say no to more paint. So. Yeah, it's, you can't. It's, Two can't, extremes of the spectrum here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I'm getting the last little bit out before I even. Yeah, yeah. And James is buying more paint before he's even before taking he's even the plastic seal off of the of the old one. Yeah, yeah. For the same color as well. <laughs> I'll oh, just add. Can, it's not like he's got like loads of ranges. He's got like loads of the same paint. You can never have enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay right this is a bit of a long one i'll read this one off uh for me the color plan stage comes before even buying the miniatures i look at the model ranges and ones i like i form ideas about the color schemes or sometimes having an idea for a color scheme first and then think about what range it would look good on buying models basically happens when i'm so in love with a color scheme or an idea that i have to see it implemented but i don't write down pots of paint first i don't think in terms of specific bottles or premixed colors I just think about colors and techniques. When I do a test model, I work out an actual specific uh, color that the bottle comes in. I'm just going to write it down uh, after I've painted the first successful model, but I know before I've even bought the model what it looks like and what techniques I'm going to use to achieve it. I mean, we've got a real, that, a real serial plan. I mean, that, yeah, that's, that's that good. is, that is gonna... a level of planning that I can get behind. Yeah, I, I like. Can get is that the lot. kind of organized fun that you like, Joe? That is the kind of organized fun that that I'm here for. I'm yeah. a I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. But I completely I completely get what they're saying as well. Like how often do you like you when you saw that captain from the Warhammer Heroes? I knew what I was doing with it. Instantly away. it was like, oh, and I'm gonna paint the armor like this. I'm gonna do this. This is it. like in your head, even if you weren't writing it down, hmm. that is kind of what I think that comes down to whether you actually how much you like the model and how much you you how much you enjoy the model from looking at it before you even get your hands on it. I think, yeah, I think some models say take time to brew like a good stew, you know, and it's just, it's like. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that one rhymed. <laughs> brew like a good stew. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I get what you say though. Like it's, it's, um, I, I think that is kind of what we're, what we're getting at. Like, that's like, I wish I could be that organized. Of it. If I did that with everything, normally I have to at least, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll sit down and be building the model and then I'll, I'll start working out. Like, oh, I think that does work because sometimes you notice things on the model that you won't see in a 2D, yeah, like a details. 2D render. Yeah. 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 Um, but, but that gets a double thumb up for that, that comment. Yeah. If you can have a plan before you've even walked out the shop with it, then you're laughing. I guess for me, the whole concept is kind of alien because... I'll either, when I'm painting, it tends to be one of two things. I'm painting for myself, and in which case I quite enjoy doing box art painting. Or it's a commission, in which case I've been told what colours to do. True, although not always. You're not always told not what colours to do. Not always, fair enough. But like generally speaking, there's like an idea behind it in my experience. Yeah. 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 I'll have to try that. I guess sometimes I'll see a model and it will like desperately make me want to paint it. But I can't ever say I've been in a situation where I've thought of a really cool colour scheme that I want to try and then sort a model. That's quite an interesting way of thinking about it. Yeah. Because there's a lot of colour combos that I like, but I've never been like, hmm, what would that work well on? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Good, good Quite thought. a good way to tackle it. Yeah. Okay. Our main topic for the week. Mm -hmm. We've discussed this a little bit uh, internally. This is going to be the three essential pillars to improving at painting Warhammer faster. Mm -hmm. So everyone talks about how to improve and people often have you know, you need to practice, you need to put in thousands of hours, you need to work on this technique, you need to do the other. What I want to know is what are the things that people can implement that they'll see the quickest jump in quality with, if you get what I mean. So what are some cheaper wins? What's going to see the biggest jump the fastest? What techniques can people implement to improve quicker rather than they know the, the core basics of I've got to practice over time, eventually I'll get there. But what are some things I can start implementing to see results now? Do you want to go first, James? I can do, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think a restricted color palette is quite good because when you when you are uh, have uh, wide access to a massive plethora of paints and things, I think sometimes you half of the 
thought process behind stuff is over what paints you're choosing. Whereas if you just restrict the palette, so you're only focusing on working on those, your attention is more focused on the model than choose the color choices. You've already made a, quite a clear, concise, I'm using the, these five, 10 colors, whatever that, whatever it is. And that means that your attention is not going to be split as much onto all the myriad of colors that you would love to put on there or would like to put on there or think could look good on there. You just work with a restricted color palette. I think that that helps hugely because it means you're going to be learning those restricted colors a lot quicker because you're using more of them on the miniature because you're not using alternate colors. Um, I do think in a bit of a crazy offshoot, if you, if you uh, choose colors perhaps that you maybe haven't used a lot of previously, uh, or used before that can sometimes help because you're learning that color at the same time as and like how it dilutes how it thins how it glazes you learn, you learn all that stuff at the same time whilst being almost being forced to use it because you've restricted your color palette if that makes sense um now maybe that's not perfect for army painting but it's it might be good for just doing a test model or just picking a model up that you like the look of like maybe if you play 40k quite a lot pick an age of sigma model and going here's 10 colors i'm going to use these colors on this model and i've maybe not used all of these colors before i think that's a great experiment in itself to learn stuff and also improve yourself because you're outside your comfort zone. So I suppose that's something you could scale as well because you could theoretically do that. And like you said, you could do it like, right, I'm going to paint one in just five colors. Yeah. You could do that and then be like, right, now I'm going to do it again, but with just three. Yeah. I mean, or now I'm going to do it again. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I've seen people that have done it with primary colors before where they, they try and paint the model with primary colors and, and they're only allowed to use those or mixes of the primary colors. And, and that's always interesting. When I don't necessarily mean like in that. terms of like, number of paints you use just in terms of like how many core colors are going to be oh yeah, i get what you mean yeah no yeah yeah i mean yeah it's it, that's a good way of doing it as well like i think yeah if you if you it just puts you it puts you in a position where a lot of the choices are kind of predetermined and it means that you focus on the core thing you're doing more so mm. um, i like the idea of what you said about doing that with colors you don't use so often or you've got less experience with or yeah, maybe yeah. struggle with if yeah that's like okay i'm not very good at painting yellow the I'm going to paint a yellow model. Yeah. And not only am I going to paint a yellow model, I'm going to paint it with only four or five paints. Yeah. Or yeah. Maybe only one other prime, one other complementary color. So, on the note of like the limited palettes and things like that, obviously, memes aside, yeah. you've painted a lot of red in your I mean, time. that's fair to say. Yeah. So, like, Joe with the hot takes. Do this you week. feel, <laughs> do you feel like, good color for hot? Obviously, you're more so you're more comfortable painting red. Right? I love does, red. Does everyone have that? Like, does I everyone think so. have their go? I, I think you do like, discover a color that you really enjoy painting. Like, you know, I think you do. And you just get more comfortable with it. Yeah, like, I think I was going to say you called me out for being a child because I like refresher sweets. Meanwhile, you're like my favorite color is red. <laughs> red. Look, you're looking at me. I'm not. I'm not the my favorite color is red. <laughs> <person>. <laughs> yeah, I like sw swerve that one. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're looking like, at me then, yeah, digging me uh, out for it. Yeah, look, I. I it's just, do you know what it is? I just find it really enjoyable as a color to paint. And I think I've tried, I've done, I, I you remember I, when I had the Mayan Warrior Army, I banned myself from painting red for like a year nearly. I literally said, I'm not painting, but as in not using red, as in just using red as the main color for something. I literally had spent a year not painting red because I was like, okay, this is getting silly. Like it's, the, it's like I'm painting all the time now. Let's take a tolerance break. But so red. is it, yeah. <laughs> it is sounds, it? no, but the thing is when you are painting, when you are painting a lot of it, like it is, you know, and especially when you're painting armies and you're painting um, something that you're combining, being passionate about the color scheme and also you enjoy the color, it's, you do kind of like need to wean yourself off it and, and, and try other things because that's, that's what's going to help you to be, to get used to other colors and enjoy other colors, you know, like since, not doing it. Like, I think when I done my nights, like my um, golf racing team theme nights, I fell in love with the blue, the Mr. Hobby uh, turquoise that we Oh, used. Mr. Hobby. That's Mr. a throwback. Mr. Yeah, Hobby, yeah. yeah. It's like, what, yeah. episode three or something? I think so, yeah. Big like, ups to our OG listeners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, um, I love that uh, Mr. Hobby turquoise. We're going to get like comments like, been here since Mr. Hobby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years from now, yeah. we'll be like, yeah. been listening to you guys since the Mr. Hobby days. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but I think that's the thing. Like you do, you, you'll find something that you do. And I think when you do what I, was, what I suggested was, which is like use a restricted color palette and and do maybe you just pick colors that obviously you need your, your standard. Like oh, I need a black or I need a metallic or I need whatever. But then in and around that, picking loads of uh, a selection of colors that you don't really use very often is a really good experiment for learning those colors and and for for seeing sort of like it's almost like hitting the reset button on your painting experience a little bit because you're entering new territory with the way the paints behave finish all those kind of things so so yeah i i i, I 
I think is a good exercise to, to do. Do you reckon that'll be harder with fewer colours or with fewer paints? Uh, what ranges, or do you just mean colours in general? Just like generally. Um, I think just do a limited set of paints. So say to yourself, right, I'm going to paint this model with ten paints, and then just just see what you can do with it. I think it's a good exercise. And then, as I said, when you overlay that restriction with you're going to start naturally as well. If you've only got 10 paints, you're going to be like, right, well, this paint's got to start serving more than one purpose now. Well, yeah. yeah but if this, you throw in your ice yellow, or but, one of your but, favorite yeah. little picks, you could be like, right, well, now I'm going to use this to highlight. Well, exactly. But that's that. But you learn things like that about paint through doing exercises like that because what you would do inherently normally would be, right, I need this color to highlight this. So I'm just going to grab this color. Whereas when you've got that restriction, you're like, what can I use from these 10 paints to saturate that or to darken that or to give me something that i can use for that part of detail on the model i remember like the first time in terms of like using paints for things that for different purposes and stuff yeah yeah things that you maybe weren't told initially that it was used for or whatever um i remember the first time i had sort of worked out or got told whatever obviously quite early on like the you can just like most people you don't have to use like a a shade paint mm. to do a recess shade and things like that like i think doing that is going to help you naturally work out all those kind of things yeah, like, oh actually i can use this paint for that it's just it doesn't only have to be we talk a lot about like using things um not as they were intended so like yeah. when we talk about contrast paints a lot yeah i it's said all, that on the yeah we're topics. always like it's yeah. not what it's supposed to be used for but it's really good for this like It'll help you find those kind of things, I think, as well. Yeah. I think, again, like going back to real root basics, like adversity makes you grow and like it, it does, like especially within painting, because if you've got a restricted palette and a restricted set of colors that you're using when you're painting, you have to make choices to get to the result that you're thinking of for the model. So, mm. so yeah, by restricting your colors and, and using colors potentially that you don't use as much or if at all, um, that can sometimes give you the experimentation whilst focusing your attention on I've got to paint this model and I'm trying to paint it like this but I've only got these things to, to use to get it to that finish point. Yeah I think as well even if you're like competent mixing colors it's probably not the worst thing to brush up on like I'd, I personally don't think I would necessarily struggle with that but it would probably still be a good exercise to practice because I do so much box art painting as you would know if you've tried it before you've seen some GW recipes it that is like a wall of colors that you'll use like you, you might only paint something red, but you might use like eight reds. Mm -hmm. Whereas that's, like you say, if you're going back the other way, you're starting to think more about color values and saturation. And, I think yeah. it helps. I, th I think it helps you learn a lot of things. And I, I've got to say, like some of the best little swatches and things I've got in my painting journal are back in the in, like my homemade index of colors and things I've mixed and made. I think some of those have been just through, through either having a restricted palette or maybe running out of a color and needing to use pick something else and go oh i've not really used this before but it's kind of like what i need but let's see what happens if i put it into this and see mm. what it does to that um i think it's like a different technique as well isn't it because if you was like to go the other way and you're like i'm just going to use pre colors then you can like focus on just your brush technique and you haven't got to worry yeah, about this other thing exactly you've got to think yeah. out of mixing paints you can just focus on the minutiae of the brush stroke whereas you could go the other way like okay i've practiced a lot of brush strokes now let's focus on more theoretical color choices this that yeah, I always say it like, you know, a good painter is made up of technical skill, uh, which is obviously ability. Um, and and, you know, and that, uh, you've got to have a bit, of, you've either got flair or you haven't when it comes to miniature painting. Well, you don't want to be that something. guy who goes to the gym and just does bicep curls and leaves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah no, I, I think, mean, well, or on that note, I think it's like quite a good exercise to do to, to get you more comfortable with um, appreciating something you've learned, even though, like the finished article after that, the finished model might not necessarily be the best model you've ever painted no no but like not. it gets you more comfortable with accepting that the improvement that you've made has been like knowledge and stuff and, and the yeah. experimentation you don't need a competition entry at the end of it to mean that you've learned a lot doing it kind of it, thing it, yeah like, like what, what, I was, what i was gonna say was like it a, a good paint is made up of several things but like a good knowledge and command of paint is something that is not like a it's not like flair. It's not like uh, natural talent. It's not like uh, experience over many years. It's like, it's it's just, it's something that if you put the effort into learning your paints, their behaviors, their finished properties, you know, how they dilute, all those kind of things, it gives you something which you, 
is a really good foundation to then make informed choices that help develop that ability, that flair, that skill, that all that kind of stuff. That's a good command. It's like going into a library and there being, for every subject, being one book on the shelf that you always instinctively pick up because that's the book that you know or that's the color that you know for, or that's the color you use for that thing. By, by learning your paint and the behavioral properties of different paints and the way they finish, the way they cover, all those kind of things, it's, it's, it's like going into that library where you've got 60 books on a shelf for a topic, if that makes sense. It just it really broadens your command of, of that massively. Um, and I think working in a restricted palette with colors that you don't use that much with at all is a good way of really helping you develop that. Just a quick one. We wanted to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Siege Studios. We offer a variety of painting levels and services to accommodate for a variety of needs and budgets. Whether you want a centerpiece character for your army or a full-blown gaming force, we have what you need and we offer well above the industry standard in terms of painting quality and our service. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at siegestudios.co.uk. And in the month of September, new clients can get 5% off of any commission using code SEPTEMBER5. Uh, so mine's one that I, I've actually kind of stolen from James. James, it's a bit of advice I got from James a little while ago. And I think for me, it's personally the most growth that I saw as a painter in, in a short amount of time, which I think is obviously the, the point of where we're going in terms of improving faster. And I think the best thing about it is that you can do it at any point, like you can do it at any level of painting, which is if you if you get like um, regular infantry set of models, um, so obviously Marines is probably the best one to pull from, especially if one of the things that you want to improve is straight lines and edge highlighting and stuff. That's yeah. going to be yeah. a lot of, I think a lot of what people want to improve is that. Like that's what we see on box art is those super sharp lines. So just general cleanliness. And exactly. Things. Yeah. So it's a good Marines are a good way to do it. And I think if you pick up an infantry box of Marines, say whether it's intercessors or make it a little bit more interesting. And, and the ones that I would probably, I'm actually going to recommend is maybe the new terminators. Yeah. They're great. Um, in a set of five um, and painting them individually one at a time but really analyzing each one and yeah. getting feedback on it. I think by the end of that, um, if you're actually thinking about it, it goes back to the critical thinking thing that we had Boxy on and he was talking about. Um, if you literally have five of almost the same model um, and you're doing it in succession, taking notes of what you got wrong the first time or what you want to improve the on Imp the last time. Implementing it and implementing it each time by the end of painting five models that the improvement that you're going to have got is massive yeah. for the amount of compared to the amount of time it's taken if that makes sense like if you consider you've only painted five models but you looked at the first one and looked at the last one if you've done that properly i think anyone is going to be amazed at how much better the fifth one looks than the first one do you know what's funny i accidentally done that when i was painting for gd this year because yeah. i'd done a squad you black templars yeah my black templars yeah. and did in, them all individually in, yeah so i done them all individually in fairness i kind of knew this going in because i was like i could paint them all together but obviously i'm not going to benefit from that improvement of just the experience of i've painted this model before so part of why i chose the crusaders box was because you basically get the same sprue twice. So even though there's 10 models, you could build five. You could basically build a duplicate of each one, like one to one, because the sprues are the same. Mm -hmm. And when I, I painted the first one and I was tried my absolute hardest and I was really happy with it. But by the time I'd painted the fifth and I looked at it compared to the first one, the jump was massive. Mm. And I actually had to paint the first one again because it was too, it was too much. To yeah. yeah. It, it's crazy. Like really on paper, when you look at that, that's like saying you can paint five models and improve that much just by being mindful of that. It's it's self critiquing by it's, step. It's self critiquing yourself. And the thing is, is like it's almost like doing the high jump, isn't it? You know, like you you raise the bar every time you pass it, and then you think, well, I'm going to get over that the next time. And the thing is, is with miniature painting, you look at it and like you look at the Aquila. Okay, I've spilled over into this part of the feather bit here, or I've not cutting here sharply or whatever. Okay, I'm going to leave that one, but the next one I do next to it, I'm going to get, I am factually going to get that sharper than that one or that better painted or 
no washing that recess or whatever it is that you choose. And I think because you have that tangible previous and current, I think that's what makes you go, I've just got to trump that. I've just got to improve that. I've just got to do better than that, et cetera. And that's what it, I think it. the temptation is to, um, to paint variety and that's what's going to get you better, which is going to get you better. It, that does like work, painting, yeah. painting one of, of something and then jumping something that's completely different, you'll benefit from that as well. Mm -hmm. But you can, you can still do that. I think this suggestion is like such a small task in the grand scheme of things if you're saying paint five models mm. with that in mind you can take you can do three if you wanted right? yeah, you'd, yeah. you'd see the benefit from free literally yeah. like it, it, it's i just think it's a cool little exercise to give yourself economically as well like buying one box of 10 intercessors or 10 salt intercessors or 10 whatever is a lesser or five terminates or five yeah. terminates is a lesser investment than buying like a massive army and then you start the army day one and then the last model of the army you finished on day 300 is is ambitious is is, <laughs> is like is way better like uh, the other thing we that you know, we haven't really mentioned as well in that process is like sort of touching upon what you were saying about your black templars as well is you do kind of like not to get out the not the the donny yen but but to but you do get you do get in the you do get in the zone of 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 painting and it reaches the point where you're warmed up and your painting is your paint your lines are more consistent because your your hands warmed up or whatever so if you're focusing in in that way and you let's just say you paint a lot of try and do depending on the speed and the quality you're trying to execute but if you try and paint maybe even a one to one to have one model and then try and paint the second model the same day because your hand's going to be warmed up and your eyes dialed in with what you're looking at, number two is always going to be better than number one, typically. Hmm. So, um, and anecdotally on that, do you find that there's also that massive curve where you're warmed up and you're getting really good, and then it's three a.m. and you're still painting for some reason, and then you look at it the next morning and you're like, "What was I doing?" Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I have to, I have to cut off at a certain point because I, I start as I like catch myself zoning out a little bit and then i'm like right even if this looks good now i know it's, it's, if i'm feeling like that i know whatever i'm doing is not gonna look good tomorrow morning so i'm gonna cut off there yeah I, i've been there like you, when you when you get that little that little wiggle on the straight line that you're painting you're like oh, okay i've lost it That's yeah it. yeah all right it's time for sleep yeah yeah <laughs> you're like it's time for sleep the frustrating <laughs> thing is when you're really motivated and you really want to keep going and you're like almost like procrastinating because you want to keep painting mm. But you've so, got to, you've so got to cut it off because you've been going for 10 hours. <laughs> this is why painting before entry, the evening before, or the morning of, in my case, is really good because you're push, you're constantly pushing against the envelope. So. Some would say good. Some would say I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Them all, but. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't advocate that for anyone. I really don't. Um, yeah, but uh, but no, yeah, that that's... Yeah, that'd be mine. That was one of, the, one of the first things that James kind of recommended to me when I started working in the office. I was right. asking about improving my painting. It's right what you said, though, because like generally speaking when i was trying to think of my one for this topic instantly my brain was like paint variety stop painting space marines over and over again and we've spoken about that before and look, look don't get me wrong i've i literally said that on this podcast i was mm. like i wish i stopped painting the same thing over and over again mm. but that is talking in a broader sense that was talking about me only painting space marines for the first six months of me painting this is uh, an exercise that you can do you can no, do it with any box. If you, if you chose one model and painted each model in a week and you know, you're done just after a month if you wanted to do five or, or whatever. So I, I still think the variety thing's valid and that is long-term definitely something you should do. But this is more of a, a contained exercise. The nice thing about your exercise as well is it still gets your army finished. You yeah. haven't got to like, yeah. this isn't like some rogue random project and be telling you to go out and buy something. It's like odds are in your space marine army you've already got. Mm. 10 infantry or in your sister's army you've got sisters about or you know what, what have you yeah. termagants in your nids army you've probably already got that core infantry unit yeah, so yeah. you could quite literally take what you've probably got from your pile of shame or your ongoing army project and you're still actually contributing to something as well because you're still yeah. getting your army painted I think the key to it you can do it with like more unique models and stuff as well but I do think the key to it is that each model in the 5 or the 3 or the 10 or whatever are mostly the same that's why i think infantry units are the but i the think even if you've it. done it with it's a bigger task isn't it because you could buy two of the exact same character model but if it's like a big ornate fancy character model it's like yeah you definitely would get a be get better painting one and then painting the other mm. but you're also probably going to be kind of fatigued because it's 
more literally the same thing as well and it's a big model and there's a lot of detail on it i don't necessarily know that you'd get the same and you're gonna end up with two of the same character models unless you're gonna like sell it exactly it's yeah yeah i'd probably be even suggest being a bit more granular with it you get loads of spare parts in in all these boxes that that we buy if you get five bolt pistol arms he's gonna say paint a space marine leg isn't yeah paint paint the leg paint the leg (laughs) paint 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 multiples of the same shape or same thing from that spares you like, a leg. like a leg yeah yeah you could you yeah you could use the the spares as part of that because it's, i think i know there's i know there's reward for like oh i finished the model and i get that totally but yeah. let's just say you haven't got the investment to spend a week doing five models or two weeks doing five models or whatever it is i'd argue and advocate that maybe spray do up some shoulder pads spray some shoulder pads and try and paint the edges on the shoulder pad as neat as and as sharp as physically possible and then mm. take the first one do it better or faces, on the or faces or faces like yeah. or whatever, i think yeah. you can be that granular with it and you can dial it right down to that um because it's all it's all going to teach you things like pressure management control the brush like layering like how to do the where to place the highlights etc it's gonna it's gonna you're gonna learn from doing that, even at that non-full model level mm. um so yeah Mm-hmm. my one for how it improved fastest it might sound a bit counterintuitive or even provocative to some extent but this is from personal experience i wasted so much time i think because with most things like the way i am in my personality if before i do something i want to learn as much about it as possible and for a lot of things that's true right like if you want to learn how to use some product or do some diy thing generally the operation is i'm going to do loads of research i'm going to learn how to do it properly then i'm going to do the thing yeah i think i applied that even while i was still I think we all love watching painting tutorials and like learning new techniques and stuff yeah but i wasted so much time thinking that if i watched more videos or learned more or listened to more podcasts even like going down that rabbit hole that it would pay off but the reality was putting the time in on the brushes would have been more of a net benefit than watching some video on a very specific and rogue style of painting or how to edge highlight in this fashion or how to do grim dark or how to glaze using this method or two brush method or wet plane or whatever overwhelming yourself with knowledge i don't necessarily think is the way to go the proof, yeah. the proof is in the baking not the recipe is what you're saying basically yeah i mean it, it, it's like you you can definitely benefit from consuming all that stuff but you still have to do the thing. Exactly. Like that's the that's the the difficult part. And you like, can't. It's not just like theoretical knowledge that you have and it just magically lives in your brain. It's like if you don't actually try and execute the thing and understand the fundamentals of what that video was talking about, it's just kind of just wasted information on you. If you get what I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like nice. if I watch a video on how to do this type of blending, and then I just wander off and go about my day, and I don't actually apply that, I don't think that you're necessarily retaining that information or understanding what it is you've actually learned so on the flip side your point could also be if you were gonna watch tutorials and listen to podcasts and things to for your own benefit actually try it make sure you Mm. have a full-on interest of trying the things that you're learning so that you at least benefit from it maybe because i definitely get what you're saying and even outside of warhammer with other stuff like with music and other things like I would just watch like so much stuff, get so much information. It's almost like I'm tricking myself into saying, well, yeah, the reason I can't do it is because I just haven't unlocked the, I haven't got the information yet. Yeah. I haven't got that final nugget of info. You need to do yet. a Trinity from Matrix and just download it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, it's like I'm tricking myself. I into do think thinking, you do like, through like the osmosis of watching loads of videos, you do pick up on stuff. Oh, no, I'm not saying that do, won't yeah. make you improve. But I think I'm sure you've done it too. Where you've watched the video and you've just, Giving it a go. No, like done the opposite, like forgotten about it. Yeah. 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 I yeah. just think uh, it, yeah, you, just not forgetting that you still have to do the thing. <laughs> yeah. Like that's the whole point of it, right? You still have to follow the tutorial to benefit from it, really. Or you still have to set yourself a little challenge based on the conversation you're, you're listening to now or, or something. Like you're not ju- only going to benefit from it just, just from listening to it or something it. something i like to do now is i'll have like tutorials and stuff on while i'm painting mm. so i can do one of two things i'm like i'm actually like i said the fundamental is you need to actually be spending time doing the thing like on the brushes that's what's going to build your technique up which i know is sort of the opposite of what the point of this topic is but like i said like at the end of the day 
these are there are long term things that you just can't get around. Yeah, yeah. But if you're watching a tutorial while you're painting, you can either quickly implement what they're talking about and just give it a quick go on like a scrap bit of plastic or even on the model you're working on. So you're just immediately putting it into practice, right? Or like I said, it's information that you're downloading into your brain, like you said. But you're still putting the time in. You're still putting the hours in. Yeah. Yeah, I think, to be fair as well, I do think a lot of people, like, I don't really, maybe when I'm on, like, when I'm on lunch at work, I'll, I'll watch some painting-related YouTube videos or something or podcasts. But in general, if I'm going to, consume something to do with miniature painting it will be while i'm miniature painting yeah that's when i've run out of my like love island and stuff that i said <laughs> i like to watch just to have one in the background like i think in because you it gets you in like the the zone yeah like, no i agree like, um yeah. so i think in general most people would be like we had when we asked about what people are doing while they're listening to this almost everyone replied saying that they were doing it while they were listening while they were painting yeah um so yeah maybe Maybe that's part of the key to it as well, because at least they're still doing. They are painting. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's uh, they they're hopefully still going to be able to implement it. Um, maybe while they're hearing it or something. Yeah. yeah. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on the podcast, please leave it in the comments of the YouTube version of this video. And sometimes we put out an Instagram story on the at Seed Studios uh, page as well. This question is from Sam Casey six six one. My question, if you were cast in the up-and-coming Warhammer series, who would you want to be cast as? I thought this was fun because Ooh. we've done our who would we cast other cast. people. Yeah. Oh, this is, uh, this is... I mean, we can't do obvious ones, right? Yeah, I can't say. You can't be like, oh, I want to be Sanguinius. I oh, I, want to I would be not want to be that. We, we should oh, guess. Guys, do you what think... are you about? Why would I want to be him? He's do you think him. he wants to be Sanguinius or Dante? No. Oh, yeah, you want to be Dante. Old or dead. Thanks for the choices, lads. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great. Yeah, no. Um... <laughs> Sorry, it's a time cast. Yeah, <laughs> we're not, old now. I'm so not that old. But okay, I'm very young in the age of Astartes, if that's the case. Um, uh, do you know what? I think I would like to uh, to, and this is controversial because they don't live very long. But like, I think given what I've just said, but um, but I think just from the perspective of a guardsman would be quite interesting because you know that you're damned. You know, you know that there's no hope, but it's just an interesting just story. Just going to play like. Basically, you wish you were in like Starship Troopers or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'd preferably not like to fight Tyranids, but yeah, maybe like, I don't know. If, I don't know really. That, they're all so menacing and so bad, the different uh, Xenos and Alien factions or Xenos and, and, and Chaos factions that I don't really know. Um, we are talking about, we're talking about you being cast in a film. It's not method acting. You don't have to, you won't actually have to fight Tyranids. Yeah, I know. I, but... I have the sort of luck where if I was actually like fortunate enough to be cast in the movie, they're like, it's great news, you're going to be a guardsman. That, and they don't tell me until shooting day that like I'm going to instantly die on my yeah. first on-screen death. My role will be like nine seconds. Best thing, yeah, quickest, quickest, quickest work time ever done. There you go. You can watch everyone else have fun then. Do you know what that reminds me of? Is that, have you seen that meme where he's like, oh, how's the war going for you? He's like, oh, I can't wait to go <laughs> see my mum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think like the, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I would want to be, I would want to be like, um, like a pox walker or something. You know, like someone got to be like... What, like full prosthetic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to get like fully like... And I do want to be the one that... I even want to be a human... I want to get... I want to be a guardsman that gets turned into a pox walker. That's quite cool. So I get to do both. That's quite cool, yeah. So like, I get to... So then I get to have this like horrendous... You know, like in like Shaun of the Dead where he's been like pulled apart. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That's what I want, basically. Yeah. Like, because I I remember... Do you remember when like... um, the Walking Dead first came on TV. It might be before your time. I don't no, know. that's in my time. That's that... peak my time. Okay. Yeah. Um, good, che- good, so good like... for checking though, Joe. Yeah, so, yeah. So, um, and I... <laughs> well, I'm 12 to be fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned refreshers earlier. So yeah. I like, um, uh, to be honest, I have no idea what year it came out. It was like 2000. It was like around the 2010s. I remember it was Must like, be, yeah. yeah. So, um, cause it was after Breaking Bad, I think. So Breaking Bad was 2008, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, so um, there was a whole big thing I remember of like 2010 people just wanting to be like go for a day to be a zombie, 
Do you know what I mean? Oh, like I get cast for a yeah, day yeah. to be a zombie or like there'd be like a celebrity that was like, yeah, I got to go and be a zombie on The Walking Dead or something like that. So I was, yeah, I'd like to have that sort of vibe, but maybe I'd be like a, cool, yeah. a, a guardsman that gets turned into a pox walker. I think that'd be quite I feel cool. from just a having fun on a movie set like Angle, I'd want I know what you're I'd want to be some sort of Xenos creature. I want to be like as I thought you were gonna say orc, because that I, I, I was gonna say yeah, orc. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. yeah, orc would be yeah, good. Orc could be quite well. fun actually. And you get painted green, so you look like a whole Not just that, I want like the full like prosthetic. The full gear. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I get yeah. to wear my West Ham shirt as yeah, well. Go, I want yeah. like massive like tusks. I want to be like that. I want like big old tusks coming out my face. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Yeah. And I also want a really graphic death. Mm. I think that's a key. Like, surely. It's that's 40, a requirement. It's 40K. For me. I, I'd 40K, want, yeah, yeah, I'd want, it, yeah, I'd want that in anything. Yeah. That yeah. Cast I don't want to be like, oh, I want to be Gilliman and I want to be the hero of the, yeah. the Imperium. No. Stood on by a Titan. No. Yeah. 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 Just like, yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd actually want it to be like that. I should have done this for my pitch for the Warhammer movie. Austin Powers, you know when he's like, no, <laughs> it's just a titan just stamps on you. Yeah. Yeah. I think I wonder if they expected our answers to be so like boring, <laughs> like not the exciting characters at all. I think that's on trend for us. I think they should yes. know that based on the. Uh, yeah, we're not going to sit here and be like, yeah, I want to yeah. be Valdor, or I yeah. want to be the Emperor, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I've thought of the merging of worlds. Oh God. I've already thought I'm going to one up my uh, my pitch for a movie from last week. That was last episode, George. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. tying this in with the viewer comments, right? Yeah. Austin Powers, yeah, as the Muppets, <laughs> as 40k. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm an Inquisitor. <laughs> you see where this is going? Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that could work. Save it. That's good content. <laughs> Save it. Actually, I'll cut this bit out. I'll cut yeah, this yeah, bit yeah. out. Yeah. Save it. Uh, Amazon, if you're listening. <laughs> Uh, hobby hacks, our closing tradition on the podcast where we share a little, uh, little hobby hack trick a little for tip. you. I feel like the whole topic's been hobby hacks, really. Well, we're, we're for the people, Joe. I know, I'm just saying. Like, we just, can't give them they enough. Sh- they, should be, they, should be, they should feel happy about that. They've, I've been, got... they've been spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one based on a conversation that I had with James, Mr. Hobby Hero. How is it, this ha, ha, hang on, how has this got turned around on me? Is yeah, it sounds around, like it's yeah. going to be a dig as well. Yeah, I know. This is a dig. So, if first, he mentions mitre bonds, I'm, I'm walking <laughs> off set. No, no, no. Yeah. I can't let him say anything else. So, apparently, <laughs> this is the thing that people don't know. So, I feel like I should share it with the people. Okay. Might, might be in their best interest. I went to, uh, to James's gaff to, to paint with him for the first time, right? We do some airbrushing. And he's like, oh, oh spray, I know what some, he's say. spray some cleaner through it. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, I said, oh, where's your water? And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, do you not dilute your cleaner? And he's like, you don't have to dilute your cleaner. And I said, but have you not seen on the back of the bottle where it says Didn't read dilute it. 50-50 with water? <laughs> <laughs> don't read it. Apparently, I, and in fairness, I didn't know this at first either. You know, like the run of the mill, like Vallejo yeah. cleaner that everyone uses or even other brands, I'm pretty sure it's the same stuff. Dilute, dilute with water. Do you know what? I, 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 I didn't I, know that. I've never, ever, 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 ever seen anybody ever dilute it. No, I've, in, every, in every person that I know, every video I've seen, every I've never seen anybody. It's literally because of the design of the bottles, those 200 mil ones, or even the, the smaller 50, 100 mil, whatever they are. You just People just use it neat. Mm. So instinctively, for all these years, I've been using it neat. And I don't know. I I generally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dilute it down. Being, being honest, I just wouldn't. I just use it as. I it thought is. you were gonna say, not from like that's how it's supposed to be used, but more of just like a cost saving. Both, thing. like you well, can. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the main reason yeah. I'm gonna now do it. Yeah. I hadn't even thought of it. Do you know what's better as well? I don't know why I didn't do this, and maybe everyone else does this, and I'm just a complete idiot. But like, before you start cleaning it out, just spraying loads of water through the airbrush just to clean out like as much paint as possible. And then go with the cleaner, which is diluted with water straight into the cleaner cup. Cleans it fine. I've been doing it. I figured or, this out like two years ago. Or I've never had a clog or an issue with it not cleaning. It's mm, definitely supposed to be that put way. Put water in the airbrush first, fill up a little bit in there, and then pour some cleaner into it. So then you're diluting by using less of the cleaner that you pour the bottle into some water that's in the airbrush. That's just diluting it. Though. That's just exactly, exactly what exactly, I just exactly, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. That's the that's the yeah. For anyone who didn't know what diluting it meant. <laughs> Just covering all bases. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for explaining to the <laughs> listeners what that means. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah, to be fair, I'd never done it. That's quite a good little tip, actually. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah. That's, that's just built have in you, do now. Do you use the BA hoop? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Look on the back of the bottle. Read the, read the fine print. That is a good tip. I, I, yeah, I've never done that. So I'm gonna, I'm yeah. Gonna that go. I won't be because I've just always done it that way and I'm used to using it that way and I didn't read the back of the bottle. Cause I is that I like a flex? I, like, yeah. don't want to brag, but... Uh, no, I just, I, I just, I'm you, so used to, I'm just, so used yeah, to the I've process. Al- I've always done it as well, but I'm like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Obviously, well, The thing is that it. certain paints are more stubborn to like clean out the airbrush and stuff and I find that even even with it not diluted, sometimes you do need to really aggressively But it's a volume it. thing, right? Because this is why I spray loads of water through it before I even clean it at all. It, you're not going to like waste that much cleaner. Like I, I presume as well, even if you don't want to be even if you're saying like, oh, I don't want to dilute it, it's you wouldn't like pour like loads of it in, would you? Like you wouldn't flush out the airbrush with like loads. You'd be getting through cleaner like, like there's no tomorrow. So I've I feel got like, a feeling you're going to say, yeah, you do that. Yeah, I've done that. Probably he does do that. But if you're a normal person, you're probably trying to be a bit like sparing with your cleaning. But do you know what it is? It's because, right? it's because ev- again, everyone that I've seen use it and anyone that I've seen use it has never diluted it. So for me, it's like, well, that's just, that's, that's just what, Everybody A does or B, that's what... Even if you're not going to dilute it, I think, yeah, flushing it out with loads of water. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do use water. Yeah, I've got one of those, um, uh, almost like a ketchup Like a dropper bottle. bottle. Ketchup. No, not a dropper bottle. Don't get your hopes up. Uh, the ketchup bottle. Ketchup thing bottle with, the, the with a big... With a hose uh, on it. With a hose on it. You yeah, just yeah. squeeze that and it just, that, that flushes yeah. out quite well. Um, good tip. It's a good tip. Yeah, it's a good tip. Good on. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. Please leave your comments below with your hobby hacks or anything you want to share contributing to the topic. If you could please do us a massive favor and hit the follow button on your audio platform of choice or subscribe if you're on Spotify, that would really, really help the podcast grow. And the more we grow, the more of these episodes that you can get to enjoy for free. So thank you very much. We'll catch you next week. 